Thank you. All right, thank you so much for having me here today. As noted, I'm Aaron Smith, and I cover sustainability for two of our eight lines of businesses at Bank of America. It's global commercial banking and business banking. Today, I'm going to give you a foundation to talk about ESG. I'm going to talk about what ESG is, why it seems as if it's gone to the forefront, and I'm going to touch a little bit on the how. So let's talk about what corporate social responsibility, sustainability, ESG, any of these terms you might have heard to refer to this body of work. I like to refer to it as the intersectionality of people, planet, and prosperity. And it is a framework that speaks to how we live our lives and how we operate our businesses such that we do no harm to the planet we occupy and the communities that we reside in. So I've had the privilege of being able to travel across the country, meet with subject matter experts, talk with our clients, help them think through their sustainable business models, or how they can make their business models more sustainable. And as mentioned from Julie's comments, as well as the video, ESG, sustainability, it's been around for quite some time. It's not new. But it seems as if there's been a shift where it's gone from a nice to have to a need to have. And it's front and center. But why is that? What's happened? What's the business case? What's changed? I would point to a couple of things. First, I would point to younger investors. Younger investors that want their profits or their assets not just to be profitable, but to also be purposeful. Some of you may have heard the term profit with a purpose. Those same young investors, they have found their voice. And boy, are they using it. And they want to have fulfillment in what they do and who they do it for. So companies that can align their business model and their purpose with an ESG-aligned mission, they are going to be better prepared to attract, recruit, develop, and retain top talent. Top talent that happens to be extremely tech savvy in this innovative, fast-changing world that we're living in. Sidebar, I had the opportunity to present these points to a 1,000 young interns that were starting off their summer internship last week. And when I covered those first two points, they were beaming with pride. <laughs> they were so proud of the impact that they're having. So the third point I would point to would be the pandemic. The pandemic was a global issue, but it landed at everyone's front door. And we all had to deal. And it was somewhat of an awakening of certain existing inequities and imbalances that were prevalent in our society. You see, I think the E's always been the sexy side of ESG, but it forced us to stop and say, wait a second, we have to think about people. We have to think about access for healthcare and wellness. And it caused, in a weird way, a better balance across the ESG pillars. The fourth thing I would point to, a couple of statistics. 5,000 companies and counting currently have a net zero commitment. Over 140 countries have a net zero commitment. And over 90% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions are currently under a net zero commitment. So what's that doing? It's causing supply chain pressures upstream and downstream. Companies want more data and they want more transparency as it relates to the business practices of their partners and their clients and their suppliers. So many of you probably heard the term cash is king. I would argue that in this day and age, data is king. Data tells a story. It tells you where you've been, it can help you predict where you're going, and it can help you decision. And so we continue to see the need for more transparency and more data along value chains. We've also seen sustainability pledges that cover all three pillars, environmental, human rights, and good governance. I would also be remiss if I didn't point out that good governance is not specific to sustainability or ESG. Good governance is paramount regardless of if you're working in HR, marketing, sales, technology. Proper oversight, processes, monitories, controls, and procedures are paramount to the success of a business. The fifth point that I would point out that is driving the business case would be the flurry of regulatory activity that we've seen specifically here in the US over the past year, 2022. Starting off, we had the SEC proposed climate disclosures that came out in Q1 of 2022. And then followed up in August, we had the, the signing of the Inflation Reduction Act. It is the largest commitment to climate change in the history of the United States, $369 billion towards renewable energy sources, innovation, technology, 
infrastructure. It's meant to be catalytic as it pertains to this transition to a low carbon economy. I would also point out that here in the United States, we had some headwinds and tailwinds as it pertains to legislation. Regardless of those headwinds, however, those tailwinds continue to push us in direction of transitioning to a low carbon economy and a more socially conscious society. So I think that covers the why in the business case. Let's talk a little bit about the how. Some experts say that it's gonna take $275 trillion for us to transition. I've also heard that <laughs> it takes six trillion to fund the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. That is no small amount, but that is a huge opportunity. Some say it's the biggest opportunity since the Industrial Revolution. So what's it gonna take? Julie talked about this. It's going to take all hands on deck. No one entity is going to fund or finance that on their own. It's going to take nonprofit, for-profit, foreign domestic. It's going to take public and private sector for us to get this work done. So we all certainly have a role to play. And perhaps what I'm most proud of is the role that Bank of America has played in this work. We've been present at the G7, G20, COP27. And our CEO and chairman, Brian Monahan, he co-chairs the Sustainable Markets Initiative, or SMI, in partnership with His Royal Highness, King Charles III. And that is a convening of 200 plus CEOs across the world, across spaces, across industries, to come together, to get into the room, and to have the conversation. Now, do they have all the answers? No, but they're asking the tough questions. They're sharing best practices, and they're learning from one another with the intent to accelerate this just transition. I'm gonna close my comments by paraphrasing something that I heard Brian Monaghan say during a keynote address last week. He said, when we work together, we can solve the world's greatest problems. And to that, I emphatically say, indeed, we can. And I would add to that, it all starts with having a conversation. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Ian, who is going to have a conversation with subject matter experts on ESG in space. Thank you.